Hey guys, this is David Wunderlich, and with this video, I want to point out some things about Florida's offense against Vanderbilt. The Gators were very efficient on offense all day, and here is a drive late in the second quarter that ends in a touchdown that I think really illustrates how Dan Mullen was able to keep the Vanderbilt defense off balance and move the ball. So right here is the first play, and they're just going to have the tight end go into motion to the other side of the formation. This will cause this guy right here, who is a safety, to back up, and the guy who is currently in the back is going to rotate down. So Vanderbilt is playing a single high safety coverage, and they want their other safety to be up closer to the play on the side where the tight end is. So we watch this go forward. There we can see Stevens has come over here, and the safety is rotated down. The fact that the safeties traded positions is important because on this play, Felipe Franks is going to try to hit somebody going this way. And by moving that tight end to the other side and causing that safety to go back, it has cleared out space right here. And so what he's gonna do is he's gonna wait a little bit for Tyree Cleveland to get the inside track on this defensive back. And then as soon as he's open, he's gonna fire it and pick up a nice gain. So here we can watch it in real time. So the second play of the drive was a pretty simple inside handoff to LaMichael Pirine. Now we're on the third one, and on this one, Florida is just going to have its two outside receivers go vertical and the guy in the slot over here just do a simple out. What ends up happening is that no one is open early. And as you can see here, you got five guys rushing, but everybody else is dropping back because of those verticals. And so that is going to leave plenty of room for Felipe Franks to just scramble over this way and pick up a first down heading towards the sideline. Felipe Franks doesn't do a lot of runs, but now that he has just done one, it's on the defense's mind. So on the very next play, Dan Mullen calls for a zone read. This guy is going to go unblocked, and that is the person that Felipe Franks is going to read. If the guy stays back, then he's going to hand the ball off to Pirine, and if he comes crashing down in after the running back, Franks will have a lane out to the outside. So like I said, because Franks has just carried the ball, he stays back. So here you can see he's got the mesh point here, sticks the ball in the running back's belly, and this guy is staying back because he just saw Felipe Franks pick up a nice big run. That means it's a handoff, and Pirine is just going to go up the middle and get about six yards. On the following play, LaMichael Pirine picked up the first down on an inside run. So now Florida has run the ball four times, including one QB scramble on a called pass play. But everything's been pretty contained. And so now Vanderbilt is still sticking with that one high safety, but everybody else is going to kind of stay up because Florida is able to move the ball on the ground. As a result, out here on the sideline, Van Jefferson is going to get single coverage, and that's where Felipe Franks goes with it. He overthrows Jefferson by about a yard, but because the run game was working well, Vanderbilt is only having one deep safety to handle the pass, and he's not able to get over in time to help. So right after that incompletion, Florida is going to send Jordan Scarlett in motion off to the left, and the linebacker is going to shadow him. Florida has already made some good plays off of a running back swing pass, and they've got more to make after this as well. But in doing that, it means that there are only two guys over here on this side, and this is going to be a quick screen over here to Kadarius Tony. By sending the running back in motion, it moves the defenders around, just like on the first play of this drive, and it frees up guys in space. And so now that area has been cleared, here is Tony catching the ball. You have a good block here from Van Jefferson, and you've got two offensive linemen out blocking, and they will both get a piece of this linebacker, and that will allow Tony to get up close to a first down. So Felipe Franks just kind of dived forward on his own on the next play to pick up the first down, and now we are on first down again. On this play, Vanderbilt is going to blitz this guy off the edge, but Martez Ivy is actually going to slide out and get a good block on him. However, this is the one negative play of the drive because this defensive lineman right here is going to end up beating Brett Heggie towards Heggie's left. Brett Heggie has his left hand wrapped up in a big club, and obviously that hurts his ability to play the position well. Vanderbilt did this a couple times when Heggie was in the game, and Heggie didn't end up playing that many snaps because Vanderbilt was really going after his left side and he just couldn't handle it because his left hand is wrapped up in a club. So if you just watch that one-on-one -on -one matchup, you'll see he eventually beats Heggie and he'll get a sack on Franks. Franks could have helped himself by getting rid of the ball sooner, and Jordan Scarlett could have helped out with that block too, but neither of those things happened, and Vanderbilt gets its one good play on this drive. So now on second and 17, Dan Mullen wants to get a safe completion and pick up some yards. He sends the running back in motion again, and the linebacker does follow him a little bit, 
but ultimately that doesn't really matter because there's another linebacker over here and this play is going to the left. What's going to happen is there are going to be two shallow crossing routes with the second guy following the first. So Dan Mullen calls this passing concept follow and the point of it is to put this guy in a bind. He's going to have to decide which of these two guys he's going to cover. He ends up covering the first one and so Felipe Franks hits the second one for a nice completion. That defensive back who was up is taking the leader, and so now Franks is going to hit the follower. The Gators pick up 11 yards, and that sets up a third and six, which is not a bad outcome given what happened on first down. So here we are on third down, and once again, the running back is going in motion. This time, though, it's the deep safety who's going to be following him, not a linebacker in the box. And so because it's the safety's job to deal with the running back, and he's that far away, that's going to mean LaMichael Pirine is going to be in some nice space. You can also see with the visible players here that Vanderbilt has overloaded the offense's right side. So you have this one-on-one -on -one matchup down here and these two rushers, and that means there are only three players anywhere near the line of scrimmage to the left side of the offense. On the right side, you have these three guys lined up, these two over here, and the safety who is going to have to hustle to try to get over. Because Vanderbilt has overloaded the right side, it means there's plenty of space for Florida to punish them to the left with that quick little running back swing pass. The Franks makes a good throw out here to Pirine, and you can see here's the safety coming up, but because he has to run at full speed to try to get near Pirine, he ends up just running past Pirine. And there aren't very many players over there. He makes a guy miss and picks up a huge gain. So here's what it looks like in real time, and notice how there are so many Vanderbilt players on the right side of the formation, leaving tons of space open on the left. Finally, here's the last play. Martez Ivy will block this guy and guide him over this way so that he's out of the play. You've got Tyler Jordan is going to come around here and block a linebacker. The center, Nick Buchanan, will get this guy who's right in front of him. And Brett Heggie is going to first chip this defensive lineman and then come up here and get a good upfield block. So Ivy with his block over this way creates an edge over on the left. And then Tyler Jordan, Nick Buchanan, and Brett Heggie will create a wall to the right and that's going to create this nice running lane here that P. Ryan will go through. Down here is Van Jefferson. He could have blocked on this play if he wanted to, as he's coming up and kind of doing a crossing pattern, but he doesn't, and it doesn't end up mattering because P. Ryan is able to run through the tackle of this guy just enough to get right over the goal line. Watch this play start. This guy came to the outside, and Martez Ivy is keeping him out there. That's perfect play, creating this edge of the run lane. You can see here Nick Buchanan, is stonewalling the defensive tackle. Tyler Jordan is coming up here to get his second level block. And over on this side, here's Brett Heggie. He's got his shoulder digging into the defensive tackle here, and he's gonna come up and get a piece of that guy. So you have this side of the lane, courtesy of Nick Buchanan and Tyler Jordan. You have Martez Ivy creating that side of the lane, and Brett Heggie is up here making sure that this guy can't come over and help. And so at this point, it's a battle of wills. P. Ryan pushes through it just enough to stretch out over the end zone. So that gives you a little taste of what Dan Mullen was able to do with his offense in this game. Here's another example of where Dan Mullen exploited Vanderbilt's defense with the swing pass. This is the one that LaMichael Pirine took 63 yards right before the first half finished. So again, let's look at the formation. You can see they've got three guys over here and only two on the line, but they end up making it three and three because this guy will blitz. Now because he is blitzing, that leaves a ton of open space here in the middle of the field. Now Freddie Swain is right here in this slot and his job is probably to block this guy. But because he's blitzing in his way out of the way, Swain is going to come up here and try to take a crack at this defensive back. He ends up missing, which is fine because it wasn't really his guy in the first place, and Morale Stevens down here will come up and end up getting a block to spring Pirine out to the outside. If we watch this play unfold, here comes the big blitz. They end up getting a guy free, which is exactly what Vanderbilt wanted to have happen, but Franks is already getting rid of the ball, and he's going to hit Pirine on one of these swing passes. Here is Stevens picking up that block, like I mentioned. So Swain stayed with the play, and so now he's getting a good upfield block. We've got another good upfield block over here, and P. Ryan just uses his vision and good moves to get up the field for a giant gain. So we can watch the start of this again. Watch how Dan Mullen takes advantage of Vanderbilt's blitz to get LaMichael P. Ryan out in the open, and watch the good downfield blocking by Stevens and Swain.
So I've got one more play to show, and this is technically special teams, but it goes down in the books as a run play. So this is the fake punt with Tommy Townsend going straight up the middle. Some of this was enabled by Vanderbilt simply not coming after punt, but they do have two guys pursuing, and both are on the end. And so I think the key block of everything is over here, and who else? It's the Michael P. Ryan. He's going to get in this guy's way, and holding him up ensures that nothing particularly bad can happen as Townsend goes up the middle. So as we watch this start, here comes the edge rusher from this side, but RJ Raymond is here and he can make that block. Here is P. Ryan making the block on the other side. This Vanderbilt player could have been rushing, but he is actually come forward and is coming out because I think what he's doing is trying to cover P. Ryan in case he's going out for a pass. So by putting the running back on the edge, not only are you getting a nice block from a guy who is a good blocker, but you also have the threat of throwing to him because he is a good pass catching target. And so Vanderbilt felt like they had to have somebody over here in case that was going to happen. So here Townsend goes up the middle, and here's the person that P. Ryan was blocking, and here's the person who was worried about if P. Ryan was going out for a pass. By putting P. Ryan over there, they stayed over this way, and that meant that Nick Villano, who is one of the shield guys, he doesn't even have anybody to block because they're too far away, and Townsend gets up the field. So here it is in real time. Again, Vanderbilt doesn't really come after the punt, so that certainly helped a lot, but these two guys I think are the keys here. Both of them are affected by P. Ryan right here. P. Ryan gets a block on one of them, and the other comes out here in case P. Ryan is going to be trying to catch a pass. So despite the early problems in the red zone and with turnovers, this was actually one of Dan Mullen's best play calling games of the year. He knew exactly how to attack the Vanderbilt defense, hitting them in their weak spots, using motion to move defenders around, playing off potential tendencies, and sticking with his effective ground game to grind the Vanderbilt defense into dust by the end. Vanderbilt has one of the worst efficiency defenses in the country, so that helped things out certainly, but again, Florida had all the right play calls and they were able to execute well, and that's how you end up erasing an 18-point deficit without breaking a sweat.